Hello and welcome back. This is going to be part three of my Blender tutorial series on fluid simulations. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit interesting. We're actually going to be adding in particle systems to the fluid. Now this is a really cool effect you can make and here's what it looks like. It does take a little bit more time to bake and a little bit more time to render so be prepared for that. It's not going to be a quick, you know, quick render. So good luck and with that let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and scale up our starting cube by pressing S and 8. And then we're going to press GZ8 to scale it up onto the Z axis by 8 Blender units. And I'm going to work in wireframe mode, but if you don't like that, you can go ahead and click your objects tab right here, this little cube. And then scroll down to maximum draw type and select wired. I just traditionally work in uh, normal texture mode or solid mode. Next thing we do is we're actually going to go ahead and add in all of the objects that we need for the scene and then we'll set them up afterwards. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a cube and we're going to scale it on the x um, yeah on the x-axis by eight and then we're going to scale it on the z-axis by three. I hit three on the numpad here to kind of line it up with what our domain is going to be. I like to keep it kind of close to the edge of the domain, but you're more than welcome to do what you what you like. You'll get a different effect. If you were to do it in the middle here, it would actually kind of splash out on both sides here, which is cool. Or you can drop it from the top. All kinds of fun things you can do with it. Don't do what I do. Experiment. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bring in our cube. And we're just going to shove this in the corner near the water or near our fluid. And then we're gonna bring in our, let's bring in an echo spear. We're just gonna bring that off, off of the camera view there. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this all up. Let's move our, let's move our light out of the way. Actually, let's go ahead and turn our light into a sunlight. And we're gonna rotate that on the Z a little bit here. That's better. Okay, go ahead and change it to cycle renderers cycle render and click on what's going to be our domain and then scroll over to our physics tab now if you if it's been cut off and you don't know how to get over there you can actually just scroll your mouse wheel while hovering over it and that'll bring everything else or alternatively you can drag this out we're going to go ahead and click fluid and we're going to hit domain and this is actually bake uh, previous bake that's showing up there so that you can just ignore it It'll go away soon enough. We're going to raise the resolution to 150 and the preview to 100. I'm going to keep it on preview down here for the viewport display because it gets pretty intense as far as the amount of vertices. So we're not going to we're not going to go too crazy with that. And then here under time, we're going to change it to 10.3 because that's pretty close to the actual time that's going to match up here with the frames. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set our fluid itself up by clicking fluid and then fluid. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click our last cube, which will be our particle system. We're going to click fluid, and then we're going to go to particle. And then after that, we're going to actually click on the particle tab right here. Click on that, come over here to object, and then click here where it says dupe object, and set it for our ICO sphere or whichever sphere or object you used. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. We actually need to go back to our domain. Let me go to a frame so that way it looks normal. We're going to click our domain here. We're actually going to set it up for the particle system. Now, whenever you're using particle systems, you have to do a few things. You have to set the tracers. I'm going to set it for 50. Uh, it really doesn't matter. The more you have, the more possible particles you're going to have. And then under generate, if you have it for zero, it's going to generate no particles. So I set this for one, it's going to generate a normal amount. If you want it more, you can raise that up. And then I'm going to click on fluid boundary. We're going to change this to free slip. And you, you don't have to, but I personally like the water to slip directly off the boundary box or off the domain. And then we're going to put subdivision to two. Now, the reason why we do that is because if you have any tracers in your simulation, you have to have a subdivision of two. Blender's reasoning behind this is because we said so. So that's what we're going to have to stick with. 
And I believe that is actually going to be everything. Oh, one other thing. Click on your object that you're using for your particle systems. And under here you have types. And these are kind of basically what they are. They're your tracers. It will show you tracers. And then it will make particles for floats. And it kind of looks like a foam sitting on top of the water, which is what we're going to create today. And this other one is drops. It will basically create more realistic flecks of the droplets that separate from the actual water simulation themselves. So we're going to go ahead and start baking this. And we're actually going to set up the scene as it bakes, because oftentimes the baking can take quite some time. So I'm not going to sit here and come back an hour later just to show you how to set up the scene. When we can do it pretty quick here. We just need to get a couple, couple frames done. About 50 minutes, that's not too bad. We're going to go ahead and click Rendered Mode. Eternally, you could actually press Shift-Z, and then it'll take you right to Rendered Mode. I'm going to go back to our first frame there. And actually, let's go ahead and hide our what became our fluid right there by pressing H. And then we're going to click on our actual fluid, and we're going to give it a material. We're just going to use a simple glass shader. And then we're going to change the ORI to 1.34 because that is the index of refraction. I've listed it in a few videos before, but that is what the water is going to be. I'm going to try to click on that cube. Hey, we got it. Let's press H to hide that. Actually, no. Let's undo it all. I don't know what I'm doing most days. We're actually going to click on that one. We're just going to drag it out of the scene like we do with our Icosphere by pressing G and X and just get it out of here. Okay. Now let's go back and I'm actually going to change the color of the water. Maybe kind of like a purplish blue. Looks good. And I'm also going to click smooth as well. Now to change the color of the tracers or the foam that we're going to be making, you just click on your Icosphere, click new, and I'm going to use, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use glossy. And I'm going to make it kind of a magenta pink color. If I can get there. Right, let's skip a few frames here and see what it looks like. Oh, those are really good. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click on our Icosphere. And we're going to just shrink it down. And you can see how slow that my computer is actually running. Like I said, I'm doing all this live. I didn't really prepare for anything. I'm just doing it as I would normally set it up. And let's scale down our Icosphere to probably about 0.1. So we're going to press S, 0.1, while we have the Icosphere highlighted in our hierarchy tab right here. Let's go ahead and click the World tab. And then we're going to use nodes and we are going to actually, let's go ahead and just make the background white. Click on this right here and move it all the way up. Or generally you can set all of these to one. Now we're going to click ray visibility and we're going to check camera. That way it doesn't have the actual white background there. And as you could tell when I said that this was going to be not for laptop use, you see how slow this is going on my desktop. And I have a pretty decent computer. Okay, so now really you could just play around with different colors and try different schemes and, and see what you can come up with. And this is the point where Blender actually crashed on me and I did not save it. So this is a good reminder to everybody to save your Blender files often and frequently or you'll end up like me with nothing to finish the tutorial with. The main thing is you guys can play around with the colors and kind of get a cool effect the way you want. Hopefully everybody enjoyed the video and don't forget to like and subscribe as I will be continue to make these every Friday. Thanks.